Well, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. I'm your host, Sharon Bornholt, and I'm so happy you're here today. I am so excited to have this guest on the show today because she truly represents everything good of what I like to call the younger generation of female investors. Of course, pretty much everybody is younger at this point. What I have learned is that this new generation of successful women, though, still face some of the same challenges that I did more than two decades ago. So I'm happy to dive into that. And my guest today is New Jersey investor, Pila Yurusi, who I'm very happy is moving more toward my direction. Pili has three small children whose goal is to spread joy by showing others how to live a fit and rich life. She is the co-founder and the operator of Yurusi Holdings, LLC, with her husband, Jason. They are partners in their business. Yurusi Holdings is a multifamily investment firm that repositions underperforming properties through operational efficiencies, rebranding, and value-add renovations. They've managed the successful and profitable exit of these uh, multifamily properties. They currently have an active real estate portfolio of over $72 million. Impressive. She hosts, uh, co-hosts the Jason and Peely Project, Mom, Moms of Multifamily and More, and mo Moms of Real Estate, all can be found on Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Today, we're going to talk about how she does it all, and we're going to talk about mindset and the, the current environment for women. So welcome to the show, Peely. So honored to be here, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me. I am a huge fan, and thank you. I'm so grateful. Well, I, I am so excited because this is, this is, I'm sure, hard for you to believe, but for so many years, there were no women out there to have on my show. I mean, there was one here and one over there, but basically it was so different. So I'd like you to, uh, to just start out by telling everybody a little bit about yourself and uh uh, I'm still in all of everybody like you that has three little little bitty kids still has a business and still does yoga and does everything. So I think I'm gonna think you're superwoman. So <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about how you got started. Well, first of all, we are all superwomen, and we have we have other generations above us to thank for it, and we are teaching the generations below us everything that we do. So as long as we keep this circle going. There will be many, 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 many more women investors to come. So a little bit about me. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Peely. Uh, originally from Hawaii. Started my real estate journey. So I'm just going to jump from birth to 2012, 2013. <laughs> 2013 started um, my real estate journey. Got my real estate license after I realized, well, my husband and I realized we didn't want to manage other people's businesses. We didn't want to be in other people's businesses. My husband has been an entrepreneur pretty much at all of his life. I've had entrepreneurial tendencies, but I was always somebody that liked to keep busy, like to do things, like to jump into different businesses, like to jump into different things. So when we figured out that I was that we were going to start a family. And when I, when I got pregnant with our first child, I didn't want to bartend anymore. I didn't want to be in the restaurant business anymore. So I got my real estate license and my husband's family has a house lifting company in which they take homes, lift them, and they either fix the foundation or add more, add another level. So that's what we did. You, you hear the term add a level yes. when it comes to house flipping. We did the same thing, except opposite. We would raise the house, add a new first floor and add a basement. And these were flood zone wow. homes. So that's how we started in real estate. Jump a few years to 2016, we take down our first two duplexes in Indiana. And lo and behold, it works. And the ROI was fantastic. It was like around, I don't know, 22, 23%. ROI on these, on these properties and we held them for a year, but anytime we would have a vacancy, we would be less 25% of that holding. So Jason comes to me one day and this is, this is, this is my mindset training coming <laughs> in now. Jason comes to me one day and remember, I not remember, I actually brought those deals to our table, something that I hadn't done before. 
it was something you get into rental real estate and they were out of state at the same time. Mm -hmm. So jump a year, Jason comes to me. He was like, well, you know what, if we can do this with two duplexes, why can't we do it with 50, a hundred units, a thousand units? And I'm just like, what are the numbers on that? My <laughs> mind just like, I was like, I couldn't think that big. We went from flipping homes, you know, per, to get in where it's like, like 90,000. And then we would sell them again for, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. Now we were talking in the millions and my mind kind of like imploded. But we learned, we got a mentor and we jumped into our first 94 unit in the beginning of 2017, Yay. the beginning, yes, the beginning of this year, 2000, uh, at the beginning of 2020 in January, we actually, we actually came to an exit with that first property and we are now on our 10th property under contract and we're going to close um, uh, November 6th. So. Way to go. So so you, have, a, you have 10, the, multi, 10 multifamilies now? Yes. And, but that's, uh, uh, some of them, we actually manage the asset and some of them we are partners on, we're general partners on. Okay. So it's interesting to me that you really, so from 2013 to 2017 in four years, you made that jump? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty fast. Yeah, I, I feel like our, oh, and I, I forgot to mention this keynote for any of my mamas out there. I was pregnant the entire time. <laughs> either, either pregnant or with a small child remember I had our first child in 2014 our second child 2016 and our third child 2018 this is probably the longest I have not been pregnant <laughs> <laughs> so you can do it all being pregnant that's not easy with pregnant with babies and that's not easy but that is impressive 2013 to 2017 for anybody wondering if you can do it that's four years with babies and to go from single family homes and from one entirely different business model to another really big. So let me ask you this. I, I want to talk about who did you have to become to do that? How did you have to change your mindset to do that? I had to become more me. Mm -hmm. More I you. This goes to a mindset that I've had for a while. I don't think people actually change so much as they become more of the person that they were meant to be if they make those choices to become that better person. So like I said before, my mind was just closed at first to the, mm -hmm. to the thought of getting to large multifamily. I was probably pregnant at the time when Jason told me this. I don't remember because <laughs> pregnancy brain. Uh, and we were, our flipping business was just getting started, really getting traction. We were finally making money, like good money. And we were, we were just finally building the systems because we started getting mentors to tell us how to actually do it correctly. So we jumped into large multifamily because it just, it made sense on paper, even though, even though the numbers were kind of imploding in my head, the numbers made sense. And it was through learning and through mentorship and getting a mentor. Again, you have to get and talk with those that have done it before. That's how mm -hmm. we were able to, I guess, speed up the process. I mean, the yes. way you make it say, the way you say it, it sounds like we did it like fast forward in comparison. And we kind of did. You but did. It was because we talked to those who had done it before us and we got the mentorship and we anytime we had a question we had somebody to go at to go ask the question to I mean, yeah maybe Jason and I could have figured it out on our own but it was that much easier having having the being humble enough that if something came up that we didn't understand mm -hmm. to just you know what I have to hold on this on this question or this answer that you're asking for me and I will be right back and I would go to my mentor and we would ask him and we would come back and we would have the answer. So I was able to become the person I am because I followed in the footsteps of those that did it before me and made it my own. People are terrified to say the words I don't know, let me check, let me check and get back with you. 
somehow, somehow we all, and I was, I was kind of the same way in the beginning. We think we, we need to somehow know all the answers when you'll never know all the answers, but just showing up with confidence and saying, you know, let me make sure uh, about this, or I, let me just double check on this. You don't have to say, I don't know the answer, but let me, let me just, let me just double check my numbers on this or whatever the scenario is. People are okay with that. In fact, they would rather you would come back and be confident and sure than to just blurt something out, don't you think? Yes, no, I completely agree. Yes, it's very, very hard to say the words, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So if you can't say that, just say, I will be right back and come back with a smarter, more educated answer. And I think also, depending on who you're working with, it is refreshing to come to that person and be like, you know what? I actually don't know the answers to that question. I will be back and I will give you the answer to that question. And I want to make this note because it came into my head. When we first got started in flipping and wholesaling, I had a ton of female mentors that I could go to and talk with. I actually joined this huge group um, and there was so many female mentors in that group that I could talk with. When we first started Large Multifamily, I can't say that I remember seeing any at the time, or maybe I wasn't looking in the right places or they weren't loud enough. Mm -hmm. These days though, yeah. these days I can, I have a Rolodex of women that I can go to. If I don't have the answer to something, or if I have a deal that I need to, I rate, like if I, if I have a deal that I want to run past them or, or if I just want to talk with another like-minded investor, mm -hmm. there's so many people I can talk to, so many women I can talk to, whether it is in my peer group or mentors that have done it before me, or even those who are coming up. Mm -hmm. The thing is, as a mentor and as somebody that's been in this business for a little while, a little while, I've done, I've done a little bit, mm -hmm. I find myself that I'm always learning even from those that have not done as much as I have mm -hmm. to those that have done eons more than I have. I think the, the key is we're not in this, I think they call it homeostasis. Like we, like our bodies are like nature wants to be in this like state of calm. But if you're always in that state of calm, you're never going to grow. And in order to grow, you just have to keep on learning. Mm -hmm. So I love learning and talking with so many people, no matter where they are in life, what, where they are in real estate, how many doors they have, doesn't matter to me. I just love talking to people. But I, what I found from uh, people that are newer than you is they ask questions that you don't think, um, I, I learned this when I was creating my probate course, things that I thought were so very basic or maybe readily available on YouTube, like a mail merge how to do a mail merge. I thought, oh, that's not important. But uh, they, they brought up these things that, oh, well, that's, that's a really good idea. It's because you forget how far you've come. And therefore, they ask you things that are really good questions. And in reality, what I found is some of the questions that people ask today, there was a different answer 10 years ago. You know, things have, things have changed and grown so much that, well, wait a minute, that used to be the answer, but you've got a really good point. This is, this is the answer today. So even keeping up, and I, I think interacting with people at all levels just makes you better. And I tell people all the time, if you are living inside your comfort zone, you're in the wrong room. You have got to be uncomfortable and seeking the answers and knowing that, uh, you, well, you're just, you're just stuck if you're, if you're not uncomfortable. Yeah, I am definitely a creature of comfort. I like being in that comfort zone. Yeah. I'm from Hawaii. You put me on a beach, <laughs> a bottle of water, and and some sunscreen, and I'm good. Uh, I found, especially throughout real estate, and you know, any job I've ever had, I was always happiest though when I was when I'm growing. Mm -hmm. We think we want this comfort we mm -hmm. want to know what's happening around us but it's I mean even if I, I challenge your listeners think about those times when you were happiest were you just sitting on your couch watching tv 
No, you were probably growing and jumping into something new or, you know, the birth of a child or whatever it is. It was something that grew you, that made you happiest. So one thing that is really curious to me, too, is that uh, you said that there was nobody around in the multifamily sphere that you knew of. And I think looking at it from my point of view, things have just exploded in the past four or five years where there were no women uh, staking their, putting their stake in the ground. That, that's different now. There were, there were, I could count on one hand the number of women I knew the first 10, 12 years I was in business. I mean, seriously, uh, would you talk about being the only woman in the room. That was a thing. And in some ways that hasn't changed that much. And uh, I know you had an experience recently. So Peely and I have talked kind of offline about the, <laughs> about the way things used to be and the door only being cracked to the good old boys club for the women. And I had even in a previous business, here's an experience I had. So um, I owned and operated a home inspection company. So it's weird that we came from sort of real estate stuff, but, you know, construction type stuff. So I remember vividly there were, there were no women and almost no women in that business at that time. And being called to do a panel before the Home Builders Association. So it was me and three men. And we were up there and I used to call them kill the home inspector panels because it was, it was for me. <laughs> But, and I would always look around and just see if there was maybe a real bullseye behind my head because they would ask the guys, so uh, tell me, tell me, John, about how do you market? And then they would ask the witness one over here, well, something about direct mail. And then they would look at me and they'd go, Sharon, tell me why this app uh, is so important to have this on the cricket of the chimney and what causes the, what are the three top causes of the leaks? Or they would say, can you explain a Federal Pacific panel box? And I'd go, well, yes, I can, because I did my homework. <laughs> but it was set up in a way to make me look bad. Mm -hmm. Like they asked them all the know nothing questions and the men knew all the answers to what the tech, they were actually inspectors. I was an owner, I was not an inspector, but I went to every training. I made it my business to know my business. And uh, then, so we'll fast forward, everybody knows, you know, that the stories about asking with contractors, you know, they don't want to talk to you. They want to talk to your husband and you had an experience recently. So I like to talk about that just a little bit. And my point here is have things changed in a lot of ways In a lot of ways, not so much. Yeah, no. Uh, so um, first I'm going to talk about your story because that was poignant. It was, it sounded like and today we still have, we still face the same thing. It's like women have to prove themselves just that much more mm -hmm. in the real estate space, in the mentorship space. Yes. I like, I feel like men just kind of put their information out there and it's all of a sudden like people flock to it. Women have to almost try harder. Sell themselves. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So to the contractor. So I've worked with many, many contractors since my, my, Father-in-law is a contractor. He's been in the business 40, 50, maybe 60 years at this point. It depends on what, when you talk to him is when you get the answer. <laughs> but when it came to contractors, I knew my stuff. I, you know, after being in the business after a year or two, you know your numbers, you know things by rote, you keep on, you do it day in and day out, you look at numbers. So when a contractor comes you, to you with a bad price and you, as a woman, argue with him about it, and if they disrespect you, yes, you can argue that. But for me, it was a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. My time was better spent with my children, better spent looking at other numbers and better spent getting other contractors. So if my if it was a person that my father-in-law had worked with before, you know, my father-in-law's been in the business for 60 years, go talk to my father-in-law. And But then on the side, it would tell my father-in-law what happened. And then usually, I think all the time, mm -hmm. he would just cancel out that contractor and we wouldn't work with them. So to your question of uh, happening that just 
happened. This was a very disappointing. So I get a phone call and there is a handful, maybe 20 or 30 investors, really good friends of mine that I know if they call me, I should pick up. Mm-hmm. Like I should just pick up because I, I'll either learn something, I'll get involved with a deal, or it's just, it's just a call that I just want to pick up because he's a good friend or she's a good friend. So an investor friend of, call, of mine called I picked up and he was like, Healy, okay, I have a building in, I think he said New Mexico. I have a building in New Mexico. And I think he said like, I don't know, 150 units. He couldn't be sure how many units. And he was like, uh, the rents are about 600 units. Give me the, ins- the, the expenses. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and this is, this is a very, very well-known investor and he is uh is very smart so at first at first like I double checked myself I was like I can't give you anything with that mm-hmm. and he's like no 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 I I was I was like can you give me a little bit more information about the market maybe the building um do you have a t12 any information I was like no no, no I, I don't care about the market I just want the expenses I was like your question doesn't make sense mm-hmm. and he was like okay um you know where's Jason I've been the, he said this Where's Jason? I've been trying to get a hold of him. I was like, he's on another call. I can have him call you, um, but the numbers really don't make sense. And I, I hate myself for saying this, but because I know him so well and I was so kind of just confused by the question and why he wasn't taking my answer, mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Jason will give you the numbers better. Just wait for Jason. And he goes on to say, he was like, oh, well, Keely, I know. I wasn't expecting for you to have the numbers. Really? I thought yeah, I could get to Jason. <laughs> and I was like, okay, bye. Click. I mean, we made some small talk because we're good friends, but I was just like, I was so disappointed. I told Jason what happens, what happened. He hasn't, Jason hasn't called him. Mm-hmm. Because whatever, whatever the deal was, even if it was the best deal in the world, it's not worth dealing with somebody that's going to disrespect you. Mm-hmm. So that's a hard lesson for women to learn. I, you know, it, for me, I simply cannot wrap my brain around the fact that it's still happening today. Mm-hmm. I cannot wrap my brain around the fact that you all have all of those properties and somehow they think, what do they think? Maybe you, you pick out the paint colors or... What do they, what do they think? I actually don't pick out paint colors. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a long time ago that that's like the least of my worries when it comes yes. to these, these properties. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And the, the, but the, the worst thing about this that I want your listeners to come away with, you can't change other people. You can put out information about how, how intellectual you are, how you know your stuff. You can put out good information. You can put out great deals and you can let people know what you do, but you can't change other people. All you can do is change yourself. Mm -hmm. And that clued me into, I was still to my mindset. I'm still questioning myself. Even after all these years, I'm still questioning my abilities in the face of any sort of disrespect or, or, I don't know, I, would you call that? I don't even know what to call that. I don't, just, I, I don't know. It's, they completely just, um, the, what they don't res- respect that you are on the same level as they are at, or that, that it's even conceivable that you would be on the same level as they are. You know what, truth be told, and I know this, when it comes to large multifamily, I'm on a higher level. So I need to realize that. So any of your listeners out there, female, male, it doesn't really matter. There's going to be people that are going to disrespect you no matter your color, creed, what have you. Know your stuff. Know that you know this. And if you don't ask, have that humbleness, but you know what you know. If you're a mentor in what you do, act like it. Know it. And don't second guess yourself. Don't second guess your abilities. And this is for my mamas and my females out there, especially you. 
Do not second guess yourself. Such a great, such a great thought. So I know you have got a lot going on. I, I watch your, your videos with you and Jason. You're kind of all jumping around. I'm thinking, oh God, I wonder what time it is. They're like five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's, it's six o'clock. Maybe, maybe she slept in and it's six. <laughs> so I actually I, didn't sleep in today. I slept in until 5.30. <laughs> oh my gosh. Slept in until 5.30. Okay. We're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, my kids get up really early and yes, that's partially my fault. I know I'm a parent. I set the guidelines, mm -hmm. but well, it is what it is. They it works. Really it works. So I have to get up earlier. It works for you. So, um, God bless you. You know, I'm at the stage where I'm looking to get just a little bit more sleep now. It was like I, was, I might I slept until 6:45 this morning. Makes me feel like a total slacker. <laughs> <laughs> so you host, uh, you co-host the Moms of Multifamily and the Moms of Real Estate. Now, I haven't seen the Moms of Multifamily, but I've seen the Moms of Real Estate. You all are so good on there. All I can say to everybody is check it out because they, they keep it real. <laughs> there is nothing off limits. And if you're looking for a place to land when you are having a really crappy day or you just want to talk about the things people don't want to say out loud <laughs> that's what I love about that show because I, I don't think there's anything off limits there is there Peely? No nothing off limits it's it's four moms it's me Becca Shea Melissa Johnson and Stephanie Betters we come from uh, we were friends in the flipping and wholesaling space now we're all doing different things within real estate and one day I had this thought as I was talking to Melissa, it, it had been a thought that was growing, but I had, I had reached out to other moms in this industry and they were either too busy or, you know, COVID. Um, so I kind of let it go to the side, but it's one of those things that you need to, and this is where men, women, anyone in any industry, keep on talking to people because mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to have the next best idea. And I was talking to Melissa and I was like, Melissa, I have this idea for a while about a show with just a couple of moms talking every week. She was like, I'd be down. And then we brought in Becca and Stephanie and it's just been an amazing ride because our four pillars, maybe they're five, and I think the fifth one we don't talk about. So they're <laughs> marriage, <laughs> it's marriage uh, uh, mindset, like mental health. Mm -hmm. Uh, money, which is what women should be talking about more. And I always forget when, what was the last one? It wasn't murder because that's the one we don't talk about. <laughs> Marriage. Oh yeah. Motherhood. Motherhood. I was going to say, my, it has to do with kids. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's open. And if anybody has any questions, we go live every Thursday on YouTube and Facebook at one o'clock Eastern time. Um, but the thing is, if you guys have, if anyone has any questions, just DM me. It's, it's actually really easy. And we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about anything on that, on that live cast. So let me ask you one, one more thing. So what's next for Peely? I know you're moving from, so you're from Hawaii. You somehow ended up in the U.S. and you're in New Jersey. Now you're coming to Nashville, which means you're a lot closer to me, which will be super fun. Um, so tell me about that journey. What made you decide? Because that's a pretty major thing with, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around how you pack up your house with three babies. I, I don't know. <laughs> so what, how did that all come about? And well, for us, for me and Jason, it's the next great adventure. Uh, we are, we're ready and we want to take the next step. And that next step seemed to go elsewhere that wasn't in New Jersey. So we were actually looking in, in Arizona, we were looking in Colorado, we were even looking in Utah. Um, one day Jason comes to me and asked me about Tennessee. I was like, well, we've been there once. We've been there, to, we, we were there in Knoxville for, for conference. I, I think it's great, uh, but I have, I'm gonna get a little mushy on you. I make, I've moved a lot in my, in my, childhood and in my adulthood I just I create and this is for everyone out there create a home wherever you go create a family wherever you go and I think it's even easier to do that now because now we can bring our families with us via the internet and FaceTime and 
and creating tribes wherever you go. So Tennessee is right next to, so this is, this is the business part. Tennessee is right next to our assets that we manage. These are buildings that we are the operators on that we, that we did basically ourselves. We're right next door to those. And we are taking down the one that is uh, under contract right now. It's actually in Tennessee. Okay. So being closer to all of our holdings just makes it easier. And it, it actually gives us room to expand maybe into property management because right now we have third party management on all the properties. Maybe we'll expand that way. And we also have friends and partners that live in Tennessee yeah. and taxes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, the taxes, property tax on my house right now is 14,000. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that's boom. So we slightly follow the FI, the fire movement. And this is one step in that direction to be more financially free by lowering our taxes by basically $10,000 a year. That's and a lot. That, just, that was like, I saw that. I was like, we're going now. <laughs> when can we put the house on market? <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's kind of a brave move for people that, uh, like me, I've lived in the same place my whole life. You know, I, I, it was just weird in itself because I was sure I was meant to be born on a beach. Uh, I'm, I'm certain of that. I was born in the wrong place. But you just pick up and go, and I'm so in awe of the, the fact that you do that. And uh, But it's a smart decision. I, mean, I know that um, you'll be close to people that that are in your sphere, uh, it's a good place to own property, you know, whether it's um, right there on the Nashville border or either, either or Kentucky or Nashville, they're both, they're both uh, good, stable places. They're, you're never going to see this really crazy appreciation or depreciation. So I it's a real estate to be bold. Yeah, yeah, very, very even keeled, even, even in times of stress, you, you'll never see what happened in California or Arizona or some of the other places here. It just won't, it just won't happen. So to wrap up today, do you have any advice for women that are there women out there, they're all kind of in the same spot. And even the ones that seem to be taking it all in stride, I know from hearing subtle comments, they feel a little less than all the time how how do we move past that once and for all it starts with you like i said before you cannot change anyone else you cannot change the government by yourself you cannot change it's not the only thing you can change is yourself so you have to make those choices that are correct for you and you have to know that you are enough. And if you are having trouble right now, and these are this is for all my women out there, if you're having trouble right now, I want you right now to look me or Sharon up right now and DM us. I am having difficulty with. The key to, to anything is to also create a tribe around you. You need, and I think women were meant to grow together. There's a reason why our, our menstrual systems sync up when we're next to each other. We were meant to grow together. So find a tribe that you can grow with right now and start with me and Sharon and then expand from there. It's, it only takes a DM. It takes a reach out for help. It takes that, that, humbling yourself enough to know that you need help or you just need a little bit more advice to go A, B, C, or D and to accept that help and to know that you still have the choice to accept or not accept that. But the thing is you have to choose first. Choose. Yeah, yeah. Take the responsibility on yourself. Take your life into your own hands. It's up to you to make it happen. Great advice. So what's the best way for folks to get in touch with you, Peely? Uh, the best way is to go to my website, www.yarusiholdings.com if you wanna find out more about me and my business. And you, there's links to the podcast there, you can go there. Or like I said, simply find me on social media. I am probably the only Peely, P-I-L-I, <laughs> Yarusi, Y-A-R-U-S-I, on social, everywhere. 
Probably true. Find somebody else. Let me know, and I'll have a discussion <laughs> with her. Peely, <laughs> this was so much fun. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. I think this is a, this is a particular time in history where people need encouragement. They need um, a boost, and women especially. They're, they're bogged down. So many of them are bogged down with other things like homeschooling and things. They just need um, a support system. So uh, thanks again. I'll put all the links in the show notes to uh, Peely's, uh, all the ways you can reach her. And thanks to all the listeners. Please uh, share the show and leave us a rating and a review over on iTunes. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Have a wonderful week and bye for now.